All right, my friends, we are in a brand new year. 2023 is here, and we have so much to look forward to. That's why we're going to do our annual look forward. I've got 23 things that I am super hyped for in 2023. Let's get started. Number 23, and you know this is going to be banger after banger if I'm starting with Octopath Traveler 2, which comes out in February. Octopath Traveler 1 absolutely blew me away. I was not prepared for that HD 2D beauty of that original game. And of course, we've had Triangle Strategy and Live Alive as well. But Octopath Traveler 2 brings back the formula a bunch of new characters and you've got a bunch of disparate storylines that interconnect in some interesting ways but lots of different paths to dig the introduction of some brand new gameplay elements in here as well but again that lush gorgeous visual style of Octopath Traveler is coming back and it's coming soon comes out in February and I cannot freaking wait for Octopath Traveler 2 number 22 is John Wick Chapter 4 and this movie looks like it's going to be a ton of fun I love these John Wick movies We've got some new characters in here. Bill Skarsgård's looking very menacing. And Donnie Yen is a new foil for John Wick, played by the incomparable Keanu Reeves. And it looks like he's going to have his hands full. Lots of assassins out to get him. Going to be a lot of fun. But John Wick, as we all know, hard to kill. Really hard to kill this franchise, which just keeps growing and growing and going. There's already talk of an Anna de Armas spinoff called The Ballerina. And there's a TV show that's in the works as well. But I can't wait for this movie. It looks like it's going to be a total blast. Number 21 on this list, and it's kind of crazy that this is near the bottom of the list, but we have so much big, awesome entertainment to look forward to. It's Final Fantasy 16, which has had some really incredible trailers that have revealed little plot lines in here. I've read that the developers were heavily influenced by fantasy like Game of Thrones, so this is a very gritty, very mature, very bloody Final Fantasy experience. And it's also got more of a lean into action combat, so it's not the traditional term based type of combat that we know from Final Fantasy of yore, but the franchise has been moving more and more into this direction. They're basically amping up the visuals and giving us all kinds of stimulation overload, and I think part of that is to give us a little bit more thumb candy, a little bit more Twitch thumb candy as we're playing the game, but with these gorgeous absolutely ornate cut sequences that look stunning. I'm sure the story is going to be enormous and phenomenal. I cannot wait to start exploring the world of Final Fantasy 16. Number 20 on my list is Shazam! Fury of the Gods. I happen to be a pretty big fan of the original Shazam! movie. I think the cast was terrific and I am looking forward to seeing the evolution and the growth because the kids are getting older. <laughs> They're almost looking like their adult shazam counterparts, which is pretty funny. It looks like there's going to be a ton of really cool action in this and also that sort of big style humor which I thought worked really well in the original Shazam. So I'm looking forward to this. I think Zachary Levi is actually perfectly cast as Shazam and I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Of course it's going to be weird that it has these allusions and connections to other DCEU characters which we all know James Gunn and Peter Safran have kind of put the kibosh on. They've, they've killed pretty much all the roads that lead to these other DC EU characters. Who knows? Maybe there's been some frantic recuts as we're moving closer to the release of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. But my fingers are crossed that this one's even better than the first Shazam was, and that would mean that this will be a ton of fun. Number 19 on my list is Dead Space. This is the remake that Motive has been working on, and it looks staggering. Callisto Protocol ended up becoming quite a disappointment, even though it was sort of echoing some of the vibe of Dead Space, but we're going back to the source and we're updating it and upgrading it. Isaac Clarke is a very cool protagonist and we're going to be exploring these creepy spaceships and stations and it looks scary as hell and it looks gorgeous as hell. I cannot wait to get freaked out by the brand new remake of Dead Space. Number 18 on my list is the Super Mario Brothers movie. This is the animated feature coming from Illumination in partnership with Nintendo and boy does it look great. It absolutely evokes all of the memories that we have of Mario through the ages. And it's interesting because as we've played Mario as he's moved into 3D, a lot of the cut sequences and the storytelling that they've used in those Mario games, when you think back on it, it looks like this movie. But of course, this is all going to be state-of-the-art CG rendering with an incredible cast like Jack Black playing Bowser and Seth Rogen playing Donkey Kong. <laughs> Charlie Day as Luigi. You say these things and you start chuckling. But it is still 
weird that Chris Pratt is going to be playing Mario. I hope that's kind of addressed in the storytelling, and I hope that this movie is incredible. It certainly looks like it will be. My fingers are crossed. I'm heavily hyped, and I really hope it doesn't let us down. So the Super Mario Brothers movie is number 18 on my list. Number 17 is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This is the third Ant-Man movie, and I'm a big fan of Paul Rudd, and of course, I'm very fond of Evangeline Lilly. She used to work with us, and I am just blown away to see how her career has grown and grown, or shrunk in this case. This movie looks like it's going to be fun. It does look very blue screeny or green screeny or volume e, but I don't know how else they would do it because we're shrinking into the quantum realm and we're going to be dealing with Kang the Conqueror, Jonathan Majors, who did such a great job with the character in Loki. I cannot wait to see what the ramifications of the stakes of this movie are going to be because I've heard it's going to mean a lot moving into phase five of the MCU and Kang is going to become an omnipresent force, like this evil force in the MCU. So there is quite a bit of pressure on this movie. And I was a big fan of the first Ant-Man movie. The second one let me down a little bit, but there's a charm to these. But they've also always felt a little smaller, pun intended, in the MCU. And this movie is really reaching to mean and be a lot more. So let's hope that it is. Let's hope that it delivers. And let's hope that we can kind of forget that everybody is performing in front of blue screens and green screens. It's not the Star Wars project that I'm most excited for in 2023, but it's up there. It's Mandalorian Season 3. I love the first two seasons. They really set the tone for Star Wars on Disney+, Plus, and I think the baton was picked up by Andor. It's going to be a little bit interesting to go back to, the, not cartoony, but, uh, I don't know, a, a, a lot less kind of heightened maturity that we got from Andor when we go back into the universe of Mandalorian, but that has been such a satisfying series. It's definitely cool high fantasy. It's got Western vibes. And of course, Mando and Grogu are kind of on the run. They've made a bunch of decisions through the course of the storytelling in the Mandalorian series, but also the Book of Boba Fett that have kind of left them like characters without a country and so they have to make some interesting alliances we're gonna go to Mandalore and see a lot more Mandalorians and it looks incredibly action-packed and it looks like a lot of characters are gonna be wearing jetpacks and I cannot wait to go on this ride that Mando season 3 looks like it's gonna be number 15 for me is another remake this is Resident Evil 4 and Capcom has been on a tear remaking Resident Evil 2 and 3 but the pressure is big on Resident Evil 4 because the original is still incredibly playable we just got kind of a weird VR reboot of it that actually worked really well for the Oculus Quest 2, but it's going to be amazing to revisit the storyline with these heightened visuals and the improved quality of life developments that Capcom has been putting into the remakes of the Resident Evil games. It looks incredible. It also looks like it's got a lot of awesome self-referential humor and these tongue-in-cheek elements that are going to play really well, but I think at its core, the gameplay is just going to be big and bold and absolutely satisfying. Coming in at number 14, is Diablo 4, which looks like it's going to have all of the same patented addictive pull that we know from the Diablo franchise. Also, those gorgeous cut sequences that we've come to expect, which translate to incredible jaw-dropping trailers. But there's some pretty cool improvements and, and enhancements that are happening here. A lot less emphasis on inventory management. And there's going to be cross-play functionality. There's going to be controller support for PCs. And a lot of emphasis on character customization and creating the the look and feel of the characters that you want in the game and it's got all the bloody gory gameplay that you can handle getting swarmed by hordes of monsters and either casting awesome spells or bashing them with all kinds of weapons as a barbarian can't wait to get lost in the world of Diablo 4. Number 13 is the PlayStation VR 2, which is the only hardware on my list, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get some more teases at least of some pretty cool hardware in 2023. But PSVR 2 is going to dramatically improve the PlayStation VR original experience. One cable, better controllers, better ergonomic fit, better resolution, better field of view. It's got uh, eye tracking capabilities built into it. The technology in Embedded into BSVR 2 is absolutely staggering. And there's some really cool software coming for the device, like Horizon Call of the Mountain. And then there's going to be upgrades to existing VR hits as well with PSVR 2. I can't wait to get the system. I can't wait to put it through its 
paces and I can't wait to check out all the software and hopefully I'm going to be blown away by the VR technology for sure but also the risk taking and the ambition of the content you know with some awesome mechanics and some really cool new directions for stories and stuff I am so excited for the PlayStation VR 2 number 12 on my list is the Last of Us TV series coming to HBO this is looking so good and so true to form I know that Neil Druckmann directed episodes and worked hand in hand with the production on the show so it's going to feel like the games it looks like the games Pedro Pascal is such a fantastic actor I think he's a great choice for Joel Bella Ramsey is going to be playing Ellie and she was terrific on Game of Thrones so I'm expecting great things from her and then we've also got Gabriel Luna who's going to be playing Tommy Joel's brother and he was really good in that Terminator movie and I heard that he was fantastic on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I never got that far when we got into his Ghost Rider but super cool acting choices also very happy to see Anna Torv is in there and we're going to see Nick Offerman in this show as well and of course we're going to see the clickers and they look freaking terrifying I I can't wait to get creeped out by this series, and it's making me really want to play through The Last of Us Part 1 again, which is crazy. I've played that game so many times, but I'm super excited for this show. Number 11 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I'm very excited to see what James Gunn does to kind of wrap up this storyline, this thread. We've seen these characters go through so much, so much change, and I know this new movie is going to have a big emphasis on the backstory of Rocket Raccoon. I'm excited about that because he's a super cool character. I didn't know I was going to love these characters as much as I did. I'm sure like many of you, I wasn't a huge fan of Guardians of the Galaxy. I didn't know anything about it and I was very skeptical that it was going to succeed, but of course it did, the first film, and then we've just seen these characters interweave into the MCU in so many cool and delightful ways. And I think this movie is going to be a great mix of some hardcore emotion and also some really funny elements and some really cool action. I'm expecting big things out of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume three. All right, we're down to my top 10 on my list of 23 things that I'm super hyped for in 2023. Number 10 is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And this is a movie that looks like it's trying to re-encapsulate all of the plot threads and the storylines that have happened across all of the Mission Impossible movies. And it's going to culminate in Part 2, Dead Reckoning Part 2. There was a big nine-minute video showcasing one of the crazy stunts that's going to be in this movie where Tom Cruise rides a motorcycle off of a mountain ledge and and then skydives down below and he did it several times it was crazy but the trailer looks super fun super cool to see Haley Atwell also known as Captain Carter in this movie SI Morales is in this thing and of course the cast of characters that we've come to know and love from the Mission Impossible franchise are also interspersed and sprinkled throughout here as well this movie looks like it's going to be a blast. Christopher McQuarrie is the writer and director on this. I love this guy. He's so talented, and he's done so many cool movies, not the least of which have been the previous Mission Impossible movies that he has worked on with Tom Cruise. I am fired up. I can't wait for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Number 9 on my list is Street Fighter 6. You knew that this was going to be on this list for sure. This is going to be a very cool new experience for Street Fighter. A big emphasis on single player gameplay and open worlds to explore and all kinds of characters from the Street Fighter franchise that you can interact with and train with and learn from. And of course, they were all the arcade modes and the multiplayer modes and all the stuff that Street Fighter is famous for. But it's pretty cool that there's been a lot of work on character customization and exploring the universe of Street Fighter in a brand new way here. I can't wait to see how all this stuff comes together. I'm very excited and I love the colorful art style. It looks like so much fun. I think this is going to be one of the best games of 2023. My fingers are crossed. My fingers are also crossed for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which is number eight on my list. This this is from Rocksteady. It takes part in the Arkham universe, or it's a tangent on the Arkham universe. And Rocksteady and Warner Brothers in DC have all confirmed that Kevin Conroy is going to reprise his role as Batman in this game. And I couldn't be more excited about that, but it is going to feel really sad to hear that Batman voice for the last time. Rest in peace, Kevin. But I am very, very excited about this game. These characters are insane, and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to play as each of them. And they're, of course, going to combat the super strength and the superpowers of the Justice League. I don't know how the Suicide Squad could ever kill 
the Justice League, but I guess that's what we're gonna find out. And it looks like it's just gonna be really fun comic book style storytelling. And I love the fact that Brainiac has infected so much of the gameplay world here. Looks like a blast. Number seven on my list is Dune Part Two. There haven't been any trailers released for this, but I was a massive fan of the first Dune. And of course it left us on a giant cliffhanger because the story of Dune is so massive. There's so much to tell. And Dune Part Two is gonna dig into that. Austin Butler is gonna be joining the cast. And we saw a lot of change in the cast through the events of the first film. I won't spoil it for you. So it's gonna be interesting to see how all of that is kind of picked up. If we're gonna jump forward a few years into the story and how we're gonna see Paul Atreides and Lady Jessica kind of integrate with the Fremen and start to learn their ways so that Paul becomes the leader that he is meant to be and has prophesied to be. All of that stuff is going to be explored in Dune Part 2, and it's done in Denis Villeneuve's impeccable style with the, some of the best visual effects I've ever seen, at least from the first film, and I expect the second one will look even cooler. So I'm very fired up to see Dune Part 2, and it's coming out later this year. Cannot wait! Number six on my list is the Star Wars project that I'm most excited for in 2023, and that is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This is from Respawn. I loved Fallen Order, and it's gonna be so cool to catch up with an experienced and more confident Cal Kestis and BD-1 and the new adventures that they're about to go on as a more confident Jedi Knight with new powers and new abilities and new lightsabers and lots of really cool visual effects. I mean, this game just looks staggering. It looks so freaking cool. I loved re-exploring Fallen Order. I played Fallen Order on the Steam Deck and just really came to appreciate its genius and its design. You know, the fact that they so expertly embraced a Metroid-style experience experience with a Souls-like experience in the world of Star Wars. Wonderful stuff. I'm expecting bigger, better, and bolder decisions with this sequel, and it's coming up fast. Can't wait for Jedi Survivor. All right, we're closing in on our top five. Number five is Starfield from Bethesda. There couldn't be more pressure on this game, and of course it's been delayed. It was supposed to come out last year, but I think that delay is probably a very good thing. I can't imagine the amount of bug stomping that has to go on when you talk about a game of this scope and scale. We all know we're going to be exploring different worlds, and we're going to be meeting all kinds of different clans and different types of characters and robots, and everybody's going to have their own agendas, and you're going to have to make alliances or get into laser fights with all kinds of different badasses. It looks ambitious as hell, it looks beautiful, and I really hope it sticks the landing and delivers this seamless escape into this brand new universe that Bethesda is concocting for us. And I hope it runs impeccably on the Xbox Series X, because this game could not be more important for the Xbox platform. I hope it's wonderful, and we're going to find out soon. Number four on my list is the animated feature that I couldn't be more excited for. It's Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. We're going to see a whole bunch of different Spider-Men and people from all kinds of different universes. Everybody's going to have their own ideas about what it takes to be a Spider-Person, and it looks like they're all going to be chasing our beloved Miles Morales, at least from the little bits that we've seen in the trailer. Again, this is a part one. There's going to be more to this story, and it looks big. It looks absolutely crazy ambitious and it maintains that wonderful art style that Into the Spider-Verse delivered for us. But the filmmakers have been promising some brand new animation ideas and a lot of really cool visual statements to take our breath away. I am so freaking stoked for this movie. Yes, the first film was such an impressive visual statement, but I was even more impressed by the emotional power of that movie and how human everybody felt. So I'm really excited to see how they grow that and how they deliver that. It's going to be great to catch up with Peter B. Parker and Gwen Stacy and Oscar Isaac is going to be in there as Miguel O'Hara, the Spider-Man 2099 that they teased in the first Into the Spider-Verse. I am freaking out to see this movie and it's coming out in June. And of course you knew this was going to be on my list. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I am so excited for this movie. Harrison Ford is 80 years old and he's still kicking ass. I'm actually watching him on 1923 right now and he's so 
good on that show, but he belongs under the fedora of Indiana Jones, and it's going to be cool to see how they de-age him. Apparently, there's some brand new technology that's going to take our breath away when we see it on the big screen. It's impressive when you watch the trailer on YouTube, for sure, but I think we're going to take it all apart a little bit more. But I trust James Mangold. He did such an amazing job with Logan. He's such a competent and intelligent film director, and he's done some great stuff in the past. Ford versus Ferrari is definitely something that you guys should all watch as well. And I think that this is going to be a love letter to the franchise of Indiana Jones. We've got Sala in there. Apparently Karen Allen is going to be back in this movie and a bunch of new characters. It's going to be set in classic 30s, 40s era Indiana Jones timeline, but also in the 60s. And there's going to be some really cool twists and turns in this movie. At least that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm expecting. I hope it doesn't let us down. I liked a lot of Crystal Skull, but I totally understand why people hate that movie and despise it. It definitely doesn't stack up to the original trilogy of the Indiana Jones films, but I have an expectation that Dial of Destiny absolutely will. And probably not a big surprise, number two for me is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This is the sequel to Breath of the Wild, which is my favorite game of all time. I'm happy to say that still to this day. It came out in 2017. It still takes my breath away, and I think that's exactly what Tears of the Kingdom is going to do, although I do have to think that because it's a sequel and it's building on systems that we're very familiar with, it may not revolutionize the Zelda formula as much as Breath of the Wild did. Although there are a lot of rumors and speculation about the fact that there's going to be some online integration. Maybe it's going to be a little bit like what we see in the From Software titles, which is interesting because Elden Ring clearly was inspired by what we saw in Breath of the Wild. It's, it's cool how the video game industry kind of makes circles like that, right? But Tears of the Kingdom looks absolutely Absolutely gorgeous again and there's going to be some interesting new directions gameplay wise and some beautiful vistas for us to take in apparently it's a lot more focused on being in the air which is very cool I am super hyped for the game and I can't help but speculate that perhaps it will be tied to the announcement of some new Nintendo console, like we have seen with previous Zelda experiences in the past, like Breath of the Wild. So we'll see, who knows, but this game is so high on my list, it's number two. But number one is Marvel's Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac for the PlayStation 5. This is a game that I am just absolutely dying to play and find out more about because we've really only just gotten this little teaser taste of what we can expect. Presumably, it's going to be cooperative spider Manning, which is crazy. So we'll have Miles and Peter Parker playing together. I mean, when you see them front and center working together, it really gives you the impression that they're going to be playable together. And perhaps we're going to be getting some kind of a playable Venom in this experience. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if we are teased with the Wolverine appearance because Insomniac is making the Wolverine game as well. But what I'm most excited about is to see Insomniac lift on all of the groundwork that they did with the phenomenal Spider-Man 1 and Miles Morales games, which are already two of the most replayable games I have ever experienced. I keep going back to them, whether I check them out on the PlayStation 5 and now the Steam Deck. They take my breath away every time I jump into either one of those games. And to see Insomniac take take that technology and all the lessons that they've learned, all of the missions that they have concocted and dreamed up, and all of the technology now that's at their disposal, because it's going to be really concentrated on the PlayStation 5 hardware. So now they're going to have all of that as preparation for what they're going to deliver us, and I think it's going to blow us away. I definitely expect Spider-Man 2 to be the most replayable experience that I'm going to jump into in 2023, and that's why it's number one on my list. I can't freaking wait. I can't wait for all of these. I've said that over and over again because it's true. We are in for a hell of a year in 2023 and I know I left a lot of incredible games and a lot of incredible shows and movies off the list. That's what the comments on YouTube are all about, so please fill them in down below. Let me know what I missed. Let me know what you're most hyped for and let me know what you thought of this video. Thank you for your subscription. Thank you for your support of EPN and we'll see you soon. Until then, play forever.